Are you looking for a way to easily stream your videos and pictures to any television in your home? Would you like it to be as easy as changing a channel? Well, stay tuned, and I'm going to show you how to do this with Plex and Unrate. Welcome to another edition of Tech Bytes with Ryan Nutter, your home for all things relating to smart home technology. In this episode, we're going to talk about how to manage your videos and pictures in your smart home using Plex and Unrate. Hi, I'm Ron Nutter, and we're going to be working on this together. This content is also available as an Amazon flash briefing or podcast. Please go to techbyteswithronnutter.com for more information. For any items mentioned in this episode, there are affiliate links in the description. If you click on these links, I will get a small commission, but that won't affect the price you pay for the item. If you want to get notified when new content is uploaded or released, please click on subscribe and enable notifications. Here's what we're going to do in this video and that's how to manage your videos and pictures with Plex and Unrate. First, what is Plex? If you haven't heard about it, trust me, you want to know this one. We'll talk about the required items. We'll go over installing Plex. And then we'll kind of go over briefly some of the configuration. And there's a lot here. If you haven't heard of Plex, trust me, this is one that is well worth looking at. There's several options out there in addition to Plex, but Plex is the one I've pretty much used in my smart home for several years. And I've had it in a variety of configurations. So what we're going to need to have to get this up and running, first you're going to have to have your Unrate server up and running, but you probably already got that done at this point if you're if you're looking at this video. Then what we'll have to do, and let's switch over here, and that's we're going to have to have a Plex license. And you can start out very simply with this. You can start out monthly, yearly, and I believe there's even a perpetual license. So you can buy it once and you're done. This is something that is going to be very handy to have, and it's portable across systems. Initially, when I started running this, I did it on a Mac Mini. Well, well, now I'm moving it over to my Unrate server. Totally transparent once you got it installed and you're up and running. One other thing you want to have, this is not a requirement, but really to, to get your local broadcasts, be able to watch them and potentially record them, you will need a some sort of over-the-air tuner. I've used Silicon Dust again for several years. They have a variety of options. You can see they've got the Duo, the Flex, and the 4K. Now, at one point, they had a Flex Quad. Now, these 4K ones may be to that point. I haven't looked because I'm very happy with my Duo. Now, it says two tuners, What I'll, and I'll translate like that for you that is when you have the ability to receive more than one broadcast at a time so if you're working with a couple of different televisions you can have a sports game on one tv you can have the news on another all running at the same time but that the most you can get at the same time nothing to say you can't run multiple tuners and i've got two of the flex duos because at the time i didn't think i was going to need more than two and by the time i realized that i did it was cheaper to buy another flex duo than to buy the flex quad there's a real easy interface with all these to work with this is something that is going to be good to have moving forward if you've got a 4k tv then you want to look at the 4k versions my tvs are a little older so that's not really a, a big deal for me at this point but that's the two things you're going to have to have first thing we've got to do before we really can get very far and that's to get plex installed so let's switch over here to the gui that i've got on one of my unraid servers and i always keep a list of pinned apps that i want to look at installing or using it's important or at least kicking the tires on you will find when you search for Plex, you'll find a variety of responses. Now, I, unless there's a good explanation, I always try to go to the original repository, which in this case, you'll see one that says Plex Media Server Official Media Plex Repository. Okay, that's golden for me because I've installed this on another box and had it running for several weeks. And I've been very pleased with it. Really haven't had a problem. Let's go ahead and we'll get the installation process started. And I'm going to leave the name alone. As with a lot of these, I'm going to set it up as a custom network type because I just simply want to know what IP address it's going to be on and that way if things have to talk to it I don't have to worry about punching holes in a firewall and it just simply ends up being a little bit quicker so we'll give it that address now there's a couple of directories that we're going to have to tell it where to store the information on so I'm going back over here to my main Plex server we're just going to copy the setting over because there's no sense going through all the details now here's what I'm using for my transcode directory and that's where it makes things from whatever format the file is in, it, it helps set it up so that the TV is going to be able, or whatever device you're playing on, is going to be able to do it correctly. That's a crude explanation, but that's without going into a lot of uh, tech speak. And then here's going to be the data path we're going to use. Again, I'm just going to copy and paste and move things over. You can, within reason, do whatever you want to do on this one. This is just the settings that I've come up with, and that's what we're going to do to get things moved forward. Because I want th this second server 
to be a backup to the primary in case something goes down or if i think i'm having a problem then i've got another plex system to be able to run against to make everybody happy we've got a token and this is what ids us into the plex system we're going to get logged in and i'll kind of walk you through the process of what we're looking at now if you don't already have an account on the plex.tv website get one created now because you're going to have to have that to get a token to be able to get plex up and running there's three different selections you can get in terms of licensing and this is plex.tv forward slash plex dash pass if you're sure you're going to stay this with stay with this for a long time then get the lifetime you'll it will pay for itself fairly quick since this is going to be a test server i'm going to go with the monthly option and it's going to check my status yes i know i don't have anything and this is where you go through and complete the purchasing process i'm going to do monthly for right now because i'm not sure if i'm going to how long i'll keep this one and if i keep it as long as i think i will i'll go to lifetime but just going to be airing on the side of caution so get all this filled out and then we can move on to the next step once you've gotten your plex pass purchase then basically just go back to the browser tab that you're already on and go to plex.tv forward slash claim and we're going to get a code in there so we'll copy the clipboard then we will go over here and we will just put the whole kit and caboodle in here we don't need did i copy too much no, that is literally what the link is. All right, we've got everything else done. So now we can just click on apply and we'll wait while it builds. And this may take just a little bit, but it's not too outrageous given everything that you're getting ready to experience. When you're setting up that new account for the smart home cloud service or device, please get a copy of my smart home device account checklist you see here on the screen. This will help make sure that everything gets written down that you entered to get that account created. The form will also serve as a backup copy when you get this entered into your password manager app. And if you're not already using a password manager app, please get one now and get started. You will be subscribed to my email list in exchange for the checklist. I won't share, rent, or sell your information to anyone. Okay, you can see it's got everything down and when you normally see if you're not used to working with docker when you see this long string of letters and numbers that's the container id for the particular plex can you look at it says command six finished successfully that's a good sign when you see that it's usually indicating it's going to complete right only in a few cases have i not seen successful so we'll click on done and then we'll go over here to docker and it says started but we're going to go down into the log just in case okay so lsb usb init failed okay that i'm used to seeing when when you start it up okay so everything looks right executed starting services okay it says it's done i've run into a few cases to where things didn't go right so we'll click on the plex media server again we'll go into the web ui and it may take us a little bit to come up for the first time but we're okay so we're going to say sign in and it's just walking you through the process. I'm going to call mine Plex Backup. I'm not going to allow media access outside my home because I don't like things going through the firewall because somebody could jump in and get into something that they don't need to. So we'll click on library. We'll have TV shows. We'll say next. Browse for the media folder up here to media and we'll call this tv shows add library and that's the one i'm going to put in for right now because you can as you can see do quite a bit we're going to do just the tv shows at this point plex apps not going to worry about it this has got you up and running but there's an additional step and remember i talked about the silicon dust receiver well now we've got plex we're up and running where we can do something but now we've got to give away to get local live television so that's what we're going to get into next now we've gotten into the menu for the silicon dust duo a few things we want to go look at we'll go into the system menu make sure we've got the latest available firmware installed and i did this a while back so it looks like we're okay to go from there now anytime you set one of these up and see neither one of the tuners is in use so that's fine you'll need to go through and do a channel lineup so you'll first want to tell how you got it connected, whether you've got it on cable or antenna. I've got mine on antenna and you'll go through and detect channels and it'll automatically spell out which ones are HD, which ones are not. And then you can select favorites in here as to which ones you actually let Plex see. This is something, unfortunately, you're probably going to have to do about once a quarter every six months because with the way they keep seeming to remap channels occasionally stuff's going to stop recording on you or you won't be able to get to certain stations so just as an fyi to that's kind of a, a maintenance item you need to be aware of and it gets to installation instructions walks you through what you're going to have to do see both of these it's seeing both of my 
Connect Duos. They're both on Lace Firmware. One's seeing more channels than the other, and I've got different antennas, so that, that's part of that situation. So we're good in that respect. So we'll remember that address, 10.0.1.198, and we'll go over here into Plex, and it found the one that we're going to use. Actually, let me back up because I got ahead of myself. So we went down here to Settings, and then you'll go down here to Live TV and DVR. Now, it's looking at a different tuner. This is, keep in mind that I, I've got two Plexus running, so that's it's going to get confused a little bit. So at this point, we're going to tell it to add another device. We will tell it to the zip code and that's so that it can pull down the correct guide for it so you know what's on the different channels this is the part that's going to take a while now see all those channels that i put stars on that's the ones that we're seeing here so we'll say continue then view guide it's going to take it a few minutes uh when i last did this it was probably about 20 to 30 minutes but you can see here as to what's going on shows you where things are so if you say or a fan of storm chasers well you can go down here and click record and in this episode all episodes and if it's an older show that you're going to want to watch you may have to go into advanced and it just is going to depend on when you're seeing this video and when you are setting this up but if you go to record something if it's a t if it's a show that's been out for a while because we'll go to record here on star trek generations then in this case see it sees it as a is a uh movie so we're fine there let's go back down to another one here this old house okay now if we click on record we'll say all episodes and if it's one that's an, an older show that's no longer currently airing it's not going to necessarily show to you as a new show so you'll want to go through here and do new and repeat airings so that you get that and we'll tell it which library to go into click record and then you will be able to see under dvr schedule what you've already got scheduled now see this is already pulling over from my Plex server, my primary Plex server. So that's why you're seeing other things already showing up here. But this is a, a great way to get things up and running to get some of those old shows that you maybe watched many years ago and haven't been able to find or they're they're running at a time when you can't be in front of the tv and you can build up a nice little library there are you know movies that you can record through over the air you can add to your own library on this and this is where with having it on unraid you don't have to worry about a single drive failure knocking you out of commission just kind of get your feet wet with this one there's no right or wrong way to to do this i'm just showing you just the basics to get it up and running but you see now what you can do in terms of getting the tv shows that you've loved have has maybe been on for years maybe only had one season you just want to watch it again and again this gives you the ability to do it if you shoot home videos you can play them through plex you can play it back on a multiple set of devices so this is something that you're going to get a lot of enjoyment out of and it's going to be something that's going to be fun for the whole family maybe some tweaking you have to do along the way but it's nothing that you can't take care of now wait before you click to the next video there's one more piece especially if you are new to plex that you need to know about because up until this point i have done just an install to get you up and running but you're going to need something for the client in whether it's a smart tv uh computer like apple or windows so stay with me and i'm going to show you the next thing you do so you can get full benefit of this and don't have to use a web browser we're over here on the plex tv website and if you see the url up top you're going to notice that it says plex.tv media server downloads and plex app so when you go to the downloads it would be your media download plex make sure you click on app and devices now click on windows and you're going to see everything that you've got available so if it's amazon fire tv you can get to it from the amazon fire tv store if it's google chromecast if it's ios if it's nvidia shield anything pretty much android if it's roku smart tvs you're going to see the different clients here first look at the play store or whatever sort of app store is for the client that you want to talk to your plex around all you should have to do is simply just get that installed start it running and it should automatically find your plex server it has for me every time i've tried with the different clients so i didn't have to do anything the only time it got a little confused is if i had more than one plex server running but that's not your normal configuration so this will get you up and running so once you've got your Plex server installed and you follow the steps that I did, do this next piece 
and then you'll be up and running and you can have all sorts of fun collecting your old TV shows, playing your family videos, playing the still pictures that you've done. The sky's the limit. If you're watching this on YouTube, you will see videos on the screen that are similar to the one you've just watched or other content that YouTube thinks you might be interested in. If this video helps you or provides value, please click on that like button, thumbs up. If you haven't already subscribed to the channel, please click on subscribe and enable notifications. We'll see you in the next episode. Thanks for watching.